So now that we've set up this falling glass as a dynamic material instance so that we can control it from in the blueprint, we're going to set up a dynamic material instance for the vat, which is that glass that's going to be breaking apart. So basically, we have this glass that falls down as an FBX, and we have this glass, which is a vat, and we need to crossfade between the two of them. So we set this up as a dynamic material instance, and then we're setting the visibility so that we can see it and then we're going to crossfade its values. So the first one would be, we need to get rid of our falling glass. We need that to go away. So we have this where we're taking the opacity, setting it to zero, fading it out, and then we have the refraction where we're setting the refraction back to one, which will also make it completely opaque. And then for the second one, which is the, the vat glass, we're taking, we have a basically a complete copy of the timeline except reverse. So we're just taking it from zero to 0.7 in the opacity and from one to two in the refractions. That'll basically crossfade between these two, and it'll show our cracked glass. And if you remember, that cracked glass is there for a second. It doesn't immediately start moving, and that's because of this delay here. We're not actually starting to move this glass inward until we get to where we're, use, we're changing the display frame here. So we're saying, okay, now I want the glass to slowly come inward before that final blast, and we're using another timeline to set the display frame which is here, and obviously it's much slower at the beginning. It's slowly crunching forward the glass, and then as the glass gets thrown outward, then it gets much faster, and it happens over a course of six seconds. And then after that, the only thing we need to do is fade out that refraction, and then this height is actually a parameter that I'll show you inside my material, and in the material for the glass, you can see that I have a height parameter, which the higher the height, that it'll fade out. So it's taking the world height and using that to determine where the glass is fading out. So if you watch the glass, I'll show you here. If you watch the glass in this uh, effect, at the very end when the glass gets thrown outward, it doesn't all uniformly fade away. It's based on the height. And I have a world position height setting. I'll show you. So you can see, if you watch closely, some of this glass is already starting to fade out. You can see it much better there. And these, this piece hasn't even been touched because there's a height setting here that you can't see. And then once we get a little bit further in, that height is slowly moving up. So we'll get these pieces that are like right on the edge of the base and the base metal here. And it's slowly going up to fade out all of those pieces. So inside Shioto, this is just moving that, uh, I guess it's in a negative value, but negative five is like a taller position where we're getting rid of all of that glass. And that's how that works. So now I'm gonna show you how that works in the material. So here's my vat material, and it's just set up like a rigid body dynamic vat for the glass. And I'll just kind of quickly go over some of these settings that I have here. The main thing that I want to talk about is this is the height position value that I've set up where it'll fade out the height. This will determine where it's at. And this will this is like the fade between the edges, I'd say. So the absolute world position, divided by the fade, breakout free components, uh, B, fade in the height, clamp, zero to one. And then I'm putting that into this alpha here for the if, and that's the final opacity. So then by controlling this height, I can control where this is fading out in my scene. So the higher, the lower this number goes, the, the more of the glass that will fade out. So if I set this to like negative 10, you won't even see any glass. But if I, uh, so I'm just gonna, so I'm just controlling this within my shield blueprint. And that's how I have everything set up. Last thing I should mention is as the glass comes down and hits the base uh, metal base here, there's actually smoke that comes out of here. And as you guessed, it's a Houdini sprite sheet. And I'm just going to go through how I made that because I just want to show you guys everything of how I did this. So there's just a Niagara emitter here that I'm activating once the glass starts falling down. And it's actually pretty simple. All it is is these Houdini sprite sheets all just laid out and then I have them set up on delays and I rotated them just like this with this uh, position offset and this position uh, facing an alignment so you just have to manually rotate them and check it once you're uh, in the blueprint to get this perfect circle and in the Niagara meter it doesn't look very good but when it's hidden by the glass it actually sells it much better so with this right up against the glass it actually works okay but if you were going to do this just like a smoke out in the wild, you'd have to, or a smoke right in front of you, you'd want to add a lot more to this. You'd want to add more to multiple angles to this. You could do a lot more, but for just right up against the glass, this is fine. So let me show you how I made that smoke inside of Houdini. Pretty similar to all the other smoke I did, but I just created a circle on the ground. 
I scattered some points across it, and then I created a pyroverse source. These are my settings, pretty wide angle, frame duration four, created my density, my temperature, and my burn, and then transformed it. I just scaled it a bit, see if I can, so I just scaled it uh, to be a bit longer. And then I adjusted the velocity. And I animated the noise. And then I rasterized my attributes. Don't crash on me. OK. So then, yep, here, rasterizing everything. There's my voxel size, normalizing, clamped done and then I needed to create I wanted it doesn't actually show up too much in the actual uh, uh, sprite sheet but actually what's going on here is this actually does have collision from the glass you can see kind of like my thought process obviously I knew this was going to be flat so this like how uh, wide this is didn't really matter at the time but it doesn't really show up from the front it just kind of looks like this uh, but I created a box I transformed it and I tried to make it something kind of similar to the glass. I just wanted it to have some movement to kind of show that it was like the smoke was moving out of the way. DDB from polygons and then I used that as my collider and I'm just going to go through my smoke and show you kind of what I obviously I had uh, closed below. I didn't clip any of this so set it as closed below. Points for six in my box size 1.2. Here's my sourcing settings I have super high temperature and divergence I have a lot of disturbance if I remember correctly yeah I have about 25 disturbance I'm not actually using any of that burn here since there's no fire involved then once that's finished I just have a simple little smoke sprite sheet that I can use that looks like there was maybe glass here. This is hardly noticeable. You'd have to get so close in the actual uh, glass, but that was, that's the smoke. And then all I did is put down a pyro look. Oops. So I time shifted a bit because I didn't want any of the beginning frames. So that's how I create my smoke. Just use the flip fork textures to export your textures for the smoke. Then when you're done, go back into your uh, Unreal and put these into your content folder, obviously, and then get the side effects plugin material. Copy that, paste it, get the, and then you need to make the changes like we did for the fire, where we're using the particle relative time and a clamp on there to set this up. So just like this, particle relative time, set it up, and then come in here. And I actually used a particle color multiply to emission if I want to change anything, but I didn't, so just for if you wanted to do that you can and then when you're done with that create a material instance and mine is called front wall and you can see my settings here I have the correct lighting so that each one of these smokes is affected a little bit differently by the MDC1 and MDC2 colors because those will control the lighting on the smoke my opacity is at a 0.7 and if you remember turn opacity that is the um, that is the dot logic that I showed you that when we're viewing it from different angles, this will be more opaque when you're facing it from an angle. That way we don't get that flat edge when we're facing it. So I will show you that really quickly because I don't think I browsed over that, but it's just this logic. This You wanna have this logic multiplied by this depth blend, and then you wanna multiply that by opacity, just like that. So then in here, so my opacity is set to 0.7. These are my settings, the light's set correctly. This is my depth curve. Uh, scatter and emission don't really matter since this is just a flat smoke that's coming down. And then in my smoke here, you're just placing these one at a time, moving them around. Make sure that your master material for your uh, smoke material is set to double-sided. And then, yeah, I'm just spawning each of these and I'm changing the loop delay differently and moving them around to the correct position, uh, custom alignment, custom facing vector, and set these however you like. And that's how it works. Pretty simple. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.
I've went over many, many different things and the work process between uh, Houdini and Unreal to create this effect. We went over all pieces of this. If you have any questions, please just shoot me a message or leave a comment and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.